For this sewing skill, you'll be creating a stitch guide sample. You'll be using the stitch selector to change to different stitches. You'll also be changing the stitch length and the stitch width. So remember, the length is how long the stitch is and the width is the zigzag dial. Um, and when you finish, your sample will look something like this. To create the sample, first cut a 7 by 7 inch square and then fold it in half and iron it. You'll also want to bring a scrap piece of fabric with you to test out your stitches before you create them for your final sample. So um, you'll just, once you do the settings, you'll, you'll test it and if the stitch looks how it's supposed to look, then you'll go ahead and put it on your sample. Um, so follow the chart that's on here. There's no need to backstitch for this and make sure that you do your stitches in this order. You'll need to sew the rows close together to fit all of the samples on. Some of you may remember this part of the machine. We, we haven't used it because we've been only doing straight stitches and zigzag stitches, but there's several different types of stitches that you can do with this machine. There is the green side and the red side, and I'll show you that dial in a minute, how you change that. When you change these stitches, you just move this knob over and then you go to number four or if you're doing number five you go to five six if you're doing number eight go to number eight when you're finished make sure that you set all of the settings back to a regular straight stitch when you're done this doesn't move unless you pull it over to the side you can't force this so use your thumb to push it over and there's like little cogs and wheels down there and it will go into place. Let's take a look at the dials of the stitch length and the stitch width. So here is the zigzag stitch. It corresponds to the diagram at the top of the machine. You turn the dial to change that. So that's zero. That would be three. I think there's one that's four and a half, so that would be four, four and a half, and five would be here. Always remember to change it back to zero when you're finished. A common mistake is that people think this changes the stitch width. It does not. This changes the needle position. Please always check it's in the center position. That's our buttonhole dial. We're not doing anything with that. And our stitch length is down here. So when it shows those tiny, when you get to the one where it shows sorry, where it shows the small stitches like that, not all the way on zero, it's a half a turn down. So remember, this is zero, you want to go down a half a turn down to that. You may need to adjust it a little bit, so you're going to do your little tester sample, and if it's not working right, you can adjust this. This is a dial and a knob down here that we don't use because we've been doing everything a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch on green. So you'll pay extra attention that when you get to stitch number 11 that you have to go to the red. So the, these last four stitches you'll be creating will be on the red dial. So that means that you have to turn the line that's lined up here over to red. That means that you will be working with the stitches on this side. So that will be the red stitches. The mistake that happens here is people think that this knob has something to do with it. This has to do with a darning stitch, which is a mending stitch, and we are not using it in this class right now. So always make sure that this line is over here for stitching, and then this will be your decorative stitches on green or on red. When you're finished, please make sure that you set everything back to the normal setting. This should be on green. This should be facing over to the zigzag straight stitch. Our stitch length will be at two and a half. And the stitch selector will be all the way down here at one slash two. When you start sewing your sample rows, start from the folded edge of the fabric. If you start from the raw edge, the part that's not folded, what will hap may happen is that 
the, the fabric gets pushed over and you'll end up with some wrinkles or some uh, clumpy edges over at the side. So when you start your first row of samples, start from the folded edge of the fabric. The first few rows of stitching that you're doing are ones that we're familiar with. They are a straight stitch, regular stitch, basting stitch, and a zigzag. Uh, for number four, you're going to be changing this dial up here. So um, you can look at the sheet that I have prepared for you to see what to do. But also notice that there's a chart up here that tells you exactly where to set things at. So number four, if you go to number four and read across here, the stitch length, that is stitch, is one. The width, the stitch width, is four. And so you'll set those dials accordingly. I'm not having you back stitch on these because um, it can jam up the machine and the threads because they're decorative stitches. So if you leave extra thread here to make your sample look really beautiful, you can just go ahead and leave extra thread and tie a knot on each end. And that will make it look really nice. This is stitch number seven. It's a darning stitch. And the machine needle has to move back and forth quite a bit. So it will the fabric will be moving slower under the presser foot. Every different stitch requires you to do a different setting and it can be a little um, confusing to look across at the chart. So mark off, take your paper with you and as you complete each stitch, mark it off. I just completed number seven, so this is where I'm at right now. Number eight is the scallop stitch. Um, there's a seashell called a scallop, and it has a curved edge. It's really a beautiful stitch. Um, use your little piece of test fabric, because if it, the stitches are too close together, it gets stuck under the presser foot. If they're too far apart, you don't get the right effect. And this is a pretty little stitch that... Um, was normally done by hand, but if you do it on the edge of a fabric, and you have to be careful not to cut through the threads, it can become a decorative stitch, and you can trim around the edge of it. When you're sewing the scallop stitch, it will sew very slowly, like when you make the buttonhole. because the stitches are so close together. After the scallop stitch, the next one is the toweling stitch, and this will be the first time that you'll have to change the um, stitch selector dial over to red. Now it's kind of like flying an airplane. You have to check all your dials and make sure all the instruments are set correctly before you're able to fly. So I've changed this over to red. The stitch length is two and a half. The stitch width is four, and most importantly, you have to change this to stitch number 12. Okay, I've completed number 13 and number 15, which is a really pretty decorative stitch. If you have room, add number 16, and then please fill in um, what settings you would need to complete that stitch. The last step is to take your sample to the ironing board and iron it, give it a little bit of steam that will set the stitches and then go ahead and place it in the order. And staple it down and there you have your beautiful um, decorative stitch sample. I thought you might like to see my little workspace where I create all your little demos. There's my ironing board, my wall of inspiration, all my books, some of my artwork. That's my mother and my grandmother. That's me as a baby. This is my big industrial sewing machine. Fabrics. 
and of course, chickens.